Newport Harbor was back at Davidson Field after a week off. They dropped this one. They dropped to 1-2 and two on the season to the Capo Valley Cougars, 30-19, to 19, the final score there. Howard, uh, a lack of execution, some frustrating plays by the Sailors, plus a couple of big plays, big offensive plays and defensive by Capo Valley led to a frustrating end and a tough night for Newport Harbor. Yeah, it was a frustrating night because it just felt clunky from, mm -hmm. from the beginning. Newport Harbor really couldn't find their footing except for one possession. The second possession on offense, Oh yeah. we thought this is going to be a blowaway night for Newport Harbor because they seem to get everything that they want, but always found themselves behind the sticks, second and 12, third and 15. You know, that was either because maybe somebody on the offensive line might have missed an assignment a defensive lineman leaks through on first down and tackles the back for a two-yard loss, now you're behind the sticks. Or there's a procedural penalty, it's first and 15. I think Harbor started out first and 25, first and 30. So the offense really couldn't get their rhythm because of shooting themselves in the foot with little things like that. But there were bright spots. When there weren't miscues, the offensive line looked absolutely dominant. And that showed up with Peyton Irving's performance. That guy, in my opinion, I said it on the broadcast, he looks like a totally different back to me. Absolutely explosive. His vision in the hole was excellent, making guys miss. And the number one thing that he does is put his head down and run through defenders with a low center of gravity, uh, leads with his head and shoulder. He's a tough guy to bring down. And that seemed like a revelation to me for the Newport Harbor offense because it started to feel like, you know, we're so used to these amazing receivers and the experience of Nick Kim but when you see Peyton Irving going like that with the offensive line, you start to ask yourself, wow, do we start feeding Peyton Irving the rock and, and, and Hayden Farley the rock more and turn this into a, a ground, ground and pound team? So there were bright spots, particularly with the run game last night. Yeah, there were moments on Friday night when Peyton Irving looked like 2019 Justin McCoy. And we asked Coach Lofthouse about the run game. We talked to him this morning. I think when offensively, when, when we're clicking, and you see us running the football, we're, we're a force to be reckoned with. In addition to the run game, another thing I liked was the defensive line play. I really, really felt like when the D-line was able to be dominant, that changed everything for Harvard because Harvard was able to drop eight guys into coverage and just rely on their three down linemen to get pressure, namely from Nate Peters. Nate Peters came up with a huge tackle for loss early on in the game, had a huge sack on third down. These were game-changing, um, situation-changing plays that Nate Peters just had a one-on-one -on -one offensive lineman, defensive lineman battle, and he won his, and, and it was able to get his team off the field on third down. So those kind of plays really stand out to me, and when your D-line's going like that, it opens up the rest of the defense, whether you, have to, whether you blitz, you play man, you drop guys in zone, it just makes it easier on everybody. Yes, there, there were bright spots for the Sailors, but it was a tough loss. Things don't get any easier. Sailors on the road against Tribuco Hills, and then Jay Sarah at home, and then no bye week because of the schedule change right in the Sunset League play. So the Sailors, they have to figure things out. They got to figure things out right now, but there were silver linings, and I still believe with the talent on that team and the coaching staff, I still believe in what they can do, but they got to figure things out quick.